What is up my ninjas, I'm Strident and I am here with a review of Kamen Rider, Impaler and Camo, aka Emperor and Verde from Kamen Rider, Dragon Knight slash Ryuki. Um, these two came, I want to say one after another, I think I got Emperor first and then I got Camo. Um, I really dig these guys, but because they're so similar to the ones I've already reviewed, I'm going to kind of go over them really fast, or fairly fast, you know, faster than some of the other reviews, because a lot of them, the base is the same, the armor parts, they're the parts that kind of differ from character to character. So, you know, with these guys, it's really nice because with one, you've got this really earth tone-ish, uh, what's the word for it? Kind of like a rugged kind of power look. And the other one, you've got this flamboyant, armored, but agile kind of look, you know, kind of a, a jokester kind of look. And I dig that. Um, he seems, uh, Camel seems more lighthearted than, and he was kind of like a trickster in both versions of the, you know, Ryuki in the Japanese and the US version. Um, although I thought it was funny that uh, in uh, <laughs> in Dragon Knight, he get, he's a black dude, and he gets killed flat out. And then when they had the Ventaran Riders show up at the end, I don't remember him showing up again. I could be wrong, but I I don't really remember him. I don't remember if he did show up. He showed up and didn't do anything. But uh, I like these figures, man. I mean, that's why I'm going through all 13. I'm three shy of finishing up this collection. So, um, and as you know, I've skipped around. Some of them are SH Figure Arts and some are Figma, depending on price and depending on, you know, how much I like the character. And availability, obviously, because uh, Alternative Zero is only offered in SH Figure Arts. But anyway... Let's uh, go into all the details and the reasons why these guys are pretty dope. Alright, so the sculpt on these guys is pretty dope because they found a way to utilize some of the same base parts and then really go off with the individual, um, you know, sculpting. And I take it back. I remember now, um, what's his name? Camo did show up in the final episodes of... Uh, Dragon Knight. I think his name was Van. I swear he only showed up in that last episode, though. He didn't pop up later on. I think he was the last one to be rescued. But anyway, detail-wise, this is this is why I'm so hard on the American figures that reuse parts, is that, you know, there is a way to be clever with your reuse of parts. I mean, as you can see, they both got the same kind of pants, the same legs, but the new parts are sculpted in such a way that completely separates them, you know, shoulder pads, their um, chest plates, their helmets, their gloves, well, in some cases, the gloves, uh, the knee pad on uh, uh, Impaler, but I mean, when you look at them, you can clearly see it's two different figures, and it's obvious that they do share the same base body. This is what I'm saying, is like, you could you can do more. I mean, if we were in Japan, this is a $20 figure, so this is the equivalent of a DCUC or a Marvel Legend or even a, 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 I won't say DC Collectibles or Marvel Select because they do exactly what these guys do, where you rarely ever have the same uh, base body, and when you do, they sculpt enough to separate the figures. Um, I love Impaler's uh, horn motif all over the place, or antler motif. Um, Every little detail, even the, the difference in paint on the inside of those connection, excuse me, the connection points on his shoulders, all of them are usually silver, you know, and his, with the exception of, uh, what's his name? I'm sorry, most of them are silver with the exception of Wrath and him, but 
that looks good you know their belts the smallest detail the little insignia on their um belt where you where their advent decks are it's there and it looks good and you know even though it's not uh you can't play with it you can't do anything with it it's still well painted and it feels uh, uh voluminous in a sense you know nice I, I mean like it feels like there is volume to it it's not just flat um the knee brace is pretty dope i love that that's where he puts his uh cards in and the paint all the little details everything is well done they didn't glob on paint or anything like that just beautiful man and it's it's cool to see all these parts separate each of these guys because otherwise you'd look like an idiot buying 12 of the same exact well i'm sorry 11 of the same characters you know um the extra hands work really well with these guys i mean they work well all across the board so there's nothing really to ask for in that respect the paint the little red paint all the accents i guess is what i'm saying and i know like on the sh figure arts versions there are uh sculpted details on the decks and such but even so even with that difference these still look damn good the paint is not sloppy the tampos are extremely clean and crisp very clear um all of the sculpted details that are done to separate each rider from the other they're all done extremely well and it's consistent with all the themes and shapes and the, the, the feel of the overall uh designs all across the board you know it's one of the reasons why i was drawn to this particular franchise you know you had so many riders i mean in the show yeah some of them don't really get as much screen time as you'd like but in figure form they're dope because they're all going to be sitting on your shelf you can play with them all you know you can look at all of the awesomeness that is each character and you know each thing gives each design gives each of them a lot of character and i love it you know him with his little kickboxing stance and everything i dig it you know i really freaking dig it it's it it plays to uh collectors who want some kind of uniformity in their teams but then want individuality as well okay so these guys come with your standard figma accessories uh obviously there's weapons of choice and the hand tree and sometimes one or two extra hands um they came with pretty much I guess what they would come with, what they'd need to come with to successfully represent how they uh, appeared in the show. That's another thing I really dig about them is that, you know, they're very good at getting the character specific details to help you recreate or just, you know, pay homage to, you know, the character of your choice that's been represented in this, you know, action figure form. Um, their uh, signature weapons look really nice. The paint is really awesome, as expected from Figma. Um, the hands, there's no slop like you saw in the bootleg video that I did uh, with Asuna. Um, it's just masterfully done. You can't even see seams for the most part. Um, this is the part I hate where I have to remember what the names are. But, you know, fuck it, I'm just going to call it a yo-yo. I know it has a goofy name of some sort. I don't feel like researching what it was. But he's got his yo-yo, which I really dig. You know, the yo-yo kind of represents the chameleon tongue, the lizard tongue, you know, because he whips it at people and he comes back. And I don't know. It's a pretty decent weapon. It's very unique to him. No one else in the show had something like that. Everyone had some kind of striking weapon, with the exception of uh, Zolda, who had a gun. Um... I like it and it pretty much is just a twist tie you know like a bendy wire that plugs right into his uh, ring finger now just about any bendy wire at least that's encased in you know plastic or something can fit there because I replaced the bendy wire with this he came with a clear one um, I prefer the white because that's what he had in the show or at least that's what it looked like in the show to me um, and it works here it's not bad and then if it gets stupid you know and it starts acting up you can always if it's too bent you know you can't straighten it out you can always just get a new one and replace it so i like that you know um impaler comes with horns it's kind of like a, a i mean it's the strike vent and uh i dig that that it's a um pair of horns just like you know antlers or whatever you want to call it just like uh you know a gazelle would have 
So it's pretty dope that they did that. And these things look like they would hurt if you were impaled on them. Um, it's a pretty menacing weapon. It looks like also it's got like a shield piece to it. So you can also, you know, probably block a little bit with it. But I really dig the look of this thing. You know, some of these weapons surprised me because I didn't see them for very long in the show. And, you know, seeing them up close, it's like, wow, somebody actually really came up with a, did a good job designing all these parts and pieces to make the characters look a little bit more formidable. So, you know, I, I really dig that, and I'm pretty impressed with the design, the overall design of these weapons. They're so unique and so original for, you know, these individual characters. Um, Impaler, I know, was, he was around for a while, but he wasn't around very long. In the grand scheme of things you know from his first appearance to last appearance so it's kind of cool to see him better and you know kind of get an idea in my head of things he could possibly do with his signature weapon and the same goes for camo we could just picture a lot of like situations like in fist of legend when Jet Li was whipping uh what's his name billy chow with the belt you could see that kind of action <laughs> with this thing, you know, just popping folks, just popping and popping and popping. Them. And it, it just seems like something that, you know, homeboy would do. So, you know, it's not, it's not too outlandish and it matches. I'm kind of wondering why he has like the Chinese uh, patterns on his uh, chest. I don't remember him much in Ryuki because like I said, I didn't really watch Ryuki. I watched a little bit of Ryuki, and then I, I watched the entirety of Dragon Knight. And it's, it's even possible that I watched the whole thing of Ryuki years ago, and then when Dragon Knight came out, I was like, thank you, I actually get to watch a version that makes sense or something like that, you know? And uh, I don't know. But, you know, I'll, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Masterfully done. Accessor the accessories work. They accentuate everything you need to accentuate with these guys. Uh, they also have their Figma stands, as well as the Figma baggies, which I didn't show because it's kind of a, a standard with Figma releases that they come with a baggie and a stand. I think, uh, yeah, every Figma I have has come with those things. So it is pretty much, you know, a standard thing for your, uh, you know, Figma figures to come with their baggie and come with, you know, their stands. And the stands are kind of like, one of those underrated marvels in my opinion because they always work so well like i don't have issues with the stands I ever all my stands are nice and tight and if they're not you can just tighten the screw and it works perfectly um i'm impressed you know what i mean like they just i can i'm continually impressed with these guys you know they're, they're they, they come with what they need to come with and they look good and it's just you know it's it's pretty cool um Camo comes with an alternate hand that has the yo-yo piece or the strike vent actually in his hand, retracted. So it's cool. You can have the before and after shots. You know what I mean? After you hit someone, whoop, it comes right back to his hand. So that's a nice touch because it's necessary. The thing is, it's he's holding it in the hand opposite of the hand that actually strikes with it because he has a ring on one hand and he doesn't have it on the other hand. Um... They also have their cards, their advent cards. Each of them have one card, and they have a hand. It's the same hand for all the males, and for uh, Siren, it's completely uh, unique to her. You know, she has a unique hand because she's smaller and she's female. Um, each of them have their strike vent card, I want to say. Um, I like that his visor is down here, so that, uh, you know, it kind of separates him from everyone, every all the other figures. Um, a lot of people have issues with the Figma joints, the shape and the way they kind of jut out a little bit. I really don't mind. They look fine to me. You know, as long as they match, I'm good. I mean, look at that. And a lot of times the sculpt, the leg sculpts, does a good job of keeping the joint hidden in most poses. So, you know, the fact that if I have him standing up straight on a shelf, he doesn't have to look weird. And then maybe in an action pose, you'll see it. That doesn't bother me at all. So, you know, it's just complete win. So overall, I didn't do an articulation because, you know, articulation is the same all across the board with these guys. Um, 
the shoulder pads get out of the way because both of their shoulder pads are on ball joints. Um, they get out of the way perfectly. There's none of that crap that I went through with the Arkham City uh, Deathstroke. Or, I'm sorry, Arkham Origins Deathstroke. Um, the paint apps are really clean for the most part. Um, you know, every, every now and then I find a spot that may have smudged or maybe it had one layer of paint and me handling it kind of wore down some of the paint. But overall, that's like such a rarity. Um, I think overall these guys are pretty good. They're, they're not like the most amazing looking figures in the sense that, or as characters, they weren't like super important, but you know, for characters that didn't really have very much uh, screen time, they look amazing. Um, they look really cool next to other figures. I mean, they look really cool next to SH Figuarts. They look really cool next to other Figmas that aren't from Dragon Knight or Ryuki. Um, they're just cool looking figures, you know? Uh, I like the fact that they look so good that you could come up with your own backstory for, you know, your version of each of these characters, and I think that's dope. That's kind of what uh, a good figure should be like. Um, here he is, uh, here's Impaler standing next to Taiga, and you can clearly see uh, there's not that big of a difference between the two, even though one is an SH figure arch, which is Taiga, and the other one is a, a Figma. So, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with the overall design of these characters, period. Because the design is so well uh, executed that you have to give them props for what they've done. I mean, a lot of times you hear me talk about things being on and off model, but you don't have this issue on either version of these figures, the SH figure arts or the Figmas. The Figmas are a little more affordable, which is why I've been getting the fig. excuse me, why I've been getting the Figmas. Um, yeah, they don't come with their contract, beasts or contract monsters but they come with enough for you to recreate just about everything you saw them do in the series and that's what I'm looking for when I get these guys so um, I'll say they're pretty impressive like I said earlier these guys didn't really have a ton of uh, screen time and for the figures to still look that awesome because you know usually when a character's like that companies tend to take liberties and they didn't do that here so all in all these guys are worth your time if you want to have all 13 riders then you're going to need these guys um they look good you know even for tokusatsu characters they look really good um they don't look cheesy at least not in my opinion uh, and there's tons of fun to have with these guys so you know if you see them get them if you uh seek them out on the internet like on a you know eBay or something, it's worth the time. They're not going to be super expensive. Uh, you might enjoy getting them. So that's my story, and uh, I'm sticking to it. These are worth your time. Pick them up. I'm Strident. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I will probably see you guys on my next video. So uh, peace outside.